the one that says that our most sacred responsibility is the one that we have to the next generation, to leave this place better than we found it. That's what our grand grandparents did for us. That's how we got the public schools and the roads and bridges and parks and human services that we have today. And it's our turn to take responsibility for a generation to come. It's our turn, all of ours, to step up. That is what is at stake in this election. A better, stronger commonwealth for a whole generation or a return to what we used to do. If you're for yesterday, let me be clear, I am not your guy. <laughs> I'm just not your guy. But if you are for tomorrow, then we have work to do. Because I'm not satisfied. I won't be satisfied until every single resident who seeks work can find it. I won't be satisfied until a great school is within reach of every child in every corner of the Commonwealth. I won't be satisfied until our young men and women aren't robbed of their future because of a youthful mistake on a Cory report. I won't be satisfied until insurance companies and hospitals work with us to make health care as affordable as it is accessible today. I won't be satisfied until seniors can age in their own homes and communities instead of in nursing homes. I won't be satisfied until we have enough police on the streets and enough stability in the homes to put an end to youth violence. I won't be satisfied until we stop focusing on the polls and the pundits, on the right and the left, instead of on what's right and wrong. If you're not satisfied in the same way that I'm not satisfied, then come and help us. I need your help. I appreciate your endorsement, but I'm asking for your work. I'm asking for your time. I'm asking for your engagement, and in three very specific ways. First of all, be informed. Be informed. I have found that one of the hardest challenges in this job is being heard over the din of hate radio and all the folks who stand on the sidelines and root for failure, some of them running for governor right now. You might not know that we've had the most successful and productive legislative sessions in 30 years, but you need to know that. So get the fact sheets, go on the website, see what we have done on your behalf and where we're going. Because that enables you to do the second thing I ask you to do, which is make it personal. Talk to somebody. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, your classmates, your co-workers, your family members. And for goodness sake, talk to somebody who doesn't already agree with us. I'm not kidding. We've got to model the kind of politics that says you don't have to agree on everything before we can work together on anything. You see these yellow cards, or green cards, or whatever color this is? <laughs> They're hard to miss. They're commitment cards. Commit. Fill one out. Commit to support this ticket and this cause. And then if you read down to the bottom, you can commit to get 50 others to commit with you. That is how, from the ground up, we are going to build this movement and win this election and finish what we started. And the third thing I'll ask you to do is to believe. Believe in our values. I'm proud to be a Democrat. I like Democrats. <laughs> but I will tell you, I've noticed about Democrats, we're the first ones to believe the Republican talking points. One senator wins. And we've been acting like chicken little all over America. our values or we don't. Our values shouldn't depend on changes in the political environment. Our values are timeless. Our values tell us that government has a role to play, not in solving every problem in everybody's life, but in helping people help themselves. Our values are about generational responsibility. And if you believe in those values, act like it because nothing persuades like conviction. Nothing. I'm not motivated by ambition for higher or other office. I haven't, as I said, cut and run because it got complicated or hard. I'm not motivated by entitlement. I don't feel entitled to this job, and I welcome the challengers. By the way, why wouldn't there be so many challenges? We've already done all the heavy lifting. <laughs> 
I'm certainly not motivated by powerful interests who are saying, hurry up and get in there so you can look after us. I think I have shown you that I am willing to stand up to powerful interests if that is what it takes to make a lasting and meaningful change for a generation to come. What motivates me is gratitude. And all that's about is having come here from welfare when I was 14 in 1970, which will sound like ancient history to many of you. And it was from that moment, Massachusetts people and schools and jobs and opportunities that have given me blessings I couldn't have imagined on the south side of Chicago. And I'm grateful for that. And all I'm trying to do is give back the same better chance I got, a better school, a better job, a better future, a better government. And I say, let's go to work for that. Let's organize for that. Let's talk to our neighbors and friends and co-workers and family members and all those folks who don't agree with us about that. Let's put up lawn signs and put on bumper stickers and gather signatures and fill out these commitment cards for that. Let's care about that. Because I'm confident that if we go to work for that, if we inform ourselves and make it personal and believe we will win and deserve to win, and then we can finish what we started. Thank you again for having me.